podcast number six with Casey Jones. Um, I'm also a Jones, Eric Jones, actually. So um, uh, sales intersection is where we talk sales with the intersection being a unique perspective on business trends, whether it lightly touches on sales or goes heavy. And today we have Casey Jones, a huge advocate of underrepresented sales professionals. Um, And that was more or less a foundation, right, of, of you founding the podcast, The Other Side of Sales. Um, and in addition to that, uh, another accolade, recently named one of top 35 influential women to, to watch by Sales Hacker. Um, she hasn't won an Oscar or an Emmy yet, but we'll just proceed with the podcast. <laughs> um, Fabulous. It's good to be here. Well, way to go. How does that happen? Do you get like a, an email or something or you get like something in the mail or someone taps no, you on the you shoulder just, when you're you walking? Just get, you just get an email and you get, you get added to a blog post, you know. And what and do you do? Always, do you like take it, have a drink or call your best friend? Uh, no, you, cause you always get the, you get the email at like, I don't know, nine 30 at, in the morning on a Monday. So it's not really oh. the best time for kind of celebrating. But. So yeah, good segue then begs the question. What is your process for interviewing and hiring your teammates to ensure that your team is, you know, that cohesive so, unit? I got to be honest. I'm kind of a shitty hirer. Like I am someone who I, I go off of gut feeling and I also trust people a little bit too much about what they say. And, and we talk about, we actually had this conversation on my team pretty recently because we're, we're thinking about, um, looking for an intern or a couple of interns. And I, you know, we joked about the fact that like, I am not, I'm not a great manager. Um, if somebody doesn't, I like, if somebody doesn't tell me that they're struggling, somebody doesn't like communicate that with me, I'll just assume everything is fine. And we've had a couple of issues on my team where, it took me a couple months to realize that someone just like literally wasn't doing their job. And because I kept trusting that things were getting done and we were moving so quickly that I wasn't doing a good enough job of like really being super detailed and following up. What I can say though, is I am a good leader. Like if somebody does come to me and they're like, Hey, I'm struggling with this. I will stop everything and I will do everything I can to get them the support that they need to get to where they want to go. And we work like really well on it, like as a team and like a cohesive unit, but I need people that are super self-sufficient and really motivated to do those things on their own. And I haven't been great in the past at interviewing for that. Um, I think I'm getting better at like understanding where I've gone wrong there. Um, Where I am better is like, okay, when we have the team, how do we support one another? And I mean, especially with COVID, when we're not in the same office anymore, we have, we have daily standup. We have our morning call where we just check in on what's going on in the day. Dude, these calls are like my favorite part of the day. We laugh our asses off. Like we are telling jokes. Like we are, we are you know, we're a little team. It's just three of us. We, they are family. We are so close. I was, my boyfriend made fun of me the other day. Cause he said that I, that I was humble bragging because I was bragging to him about how my 24 year old employee will text me at like nine o'clock at night on a Friday about something personal. And I'm like, yes, yes. Like I'm cool enough that she is, that she like, that we are that close. And so I think the big thing is, and especially as we as a country are going through what a freaking time we have to care about our colleagues and our employees um, more than about the work that they do. It's actually, I don't know if you've ever seen the movie, the Martian. I, I waited for, I waited forever to see this movie because I thought it would be like really depressing and scary. It's like a, it's an, an astronaut gets trapped on Mars is basically the the premise of the movie. It turns out it's actually really, really funny. Oh, is it Matt Damon? With Matt Damon. Yeah. I watched it. I watched it. The very end of it. He talks about, um, he's, he's, he's teaching a 
a class of wannabe astronauts and he's like, okay, no matter what, at some point you are going to think that you're going to die. And all you can do is solve one problem at a time. And I feel like it's like the perfect analogy for life. Like shit is hard. We have no idea what we're doing at any given point. You're like overwhelmed with stuff and you just have to figure out like, what's the most immediate problem? What's the, what's the most urgent problem? And you solve that one. And once you got that, you move on to the next one. And like, it's amazing what we can do in this life if we just take that attitude. So what was the moment when you decided you were going to go do your own thing? And was it, I mean, was it looking back, was it the right time? Was it just, it didn't matter if it was the right time or not. It, you had enough. And I mean, what, what, what? Uh, it was not the time I had intended. So at the time I was running, I was the head of marketing for an early stage startup. And it's actually sort of, the timing was a little bit of a coincidence. So I had been asked to go to Beirut, Lebanon for 10 days to lead a series of like um, go to market and like growth strategy workshops for the first ever partnership between the UN and a startup accelerator. And side note, um, the neighborhood where this accelerator was and the hotel that I was staying in and where a bunch of the friends that I met there lived is actually right next to where those huge explosions happened in Beirut. So it's been really, really devastating seeing um, those videos. Um, but while I was there, I had just an incredible experience and I had gone over there with total imposter syndrome and sort of thought, what the hell can I teach these people? They're trying to solve real world problems. Um, but I got an amazing feedback about the value I provided, about the things that they learned. And so I came back to the States like on cloud nine and was like, oh God, I love this. I love this like mentoring and coaching of these startups. And I was like, I would love to do this. And I thought, you know, in like eight or nine months, I think I want to leave and I want to, I want to go out on my own and I want to do this work. And the second day I got back, I found out that the startup I was working for had run out of money. <laughs> So at that point, I was like, well, shit, um, do I try to find another job um, or do I go out on my own? And I took a call with a woman I really respect and we'd been working on like a, a project together. And so I was giving her an update on like, well, this project's not happening and here's why. And she's like, well, what are you going to do? And I was like, well, I was like, I'm not hundred percent certain if I want to find a job or if I want to go out on my own. And she's like, oh, if you go out on your own, like I need a marketing consultant, I'll hire you. And so that was my first client. And I was like, oh, okay. And so I don't think I applied as much intention as maybe <laughs> would have been valuable down the line. Um, but it all just kind of came together and um, it worked out. That's great. Um, and it, I mean, I'm, you know, I just started my own, my own thing and uh, the launch of the website should be coming soon and just creating something, you know, just whether it's a birdhouse or, you know, uh, something of your own. There, it's just so much more fulfilling. It really is. Um, then, you know, though, I don't know if you're finding this. The hardest part, it's like anything. The, the best part of it is also the hardest part. Like I found especially early on, like what's great about doing your own thing is like, the blend of the personal and the professional, you get this, like, it's just so much more rewarding. But I also found that like, if I had a shitty day, like if my boyfriend and I got in a fight or something like that, I had a much harder time not bringing that to work. Whereas when you work for someone else, you, it's like just much easier to leave home at home and work at work. And it just doesn't, <laughs> it's harder when you go out on your own or like you have a bad day in the office and it's just much harder to, to let it go when you're at home, it gets easier. But I just like, that was by far the hardest part for me. in like the first kind of like six or nine months where it was like, I, my girlfriend actually just, I think I'm the opposite where I kind of block 
other areas out. Yeah, and, that's good that you're able to do too. that. I'm, I wasn't good at that. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I I do. You know, I'll I'll try. I really try. I meditate every day, and um, I I'll try to, you know, set a clean slate. But yeah. sometimes I just I I miss really big red. You know, like yeah, there's big speed bumps in the relationship, and I should be addressing them, and I should have to bring them up. You know, yeah. if a seven year old. Would, would notice, <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, it, it, I mean, it is funny. It's just, um, I think it teaches you a lot about sort of where your blind spots are in life, because you 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 get caught up with things. I think much easier when it's when it's yours, and sometimes yeah. it's really good, and sometimes it's not so good. Uh, yeah. One thing I wanted to ask you is. It seems like, you know, one of the reasons you're successful and, and people love you and you have such a strong social network is you speak from the heart and, yeah. and that heart, that heart is a good heart. Um, and I, and I follow you on, you know, LinkedIn and, and Twitter. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of authenticity and, you know, in terms of building the brand, you talk about that consistency and authenticity. What about, you know, the people that need a paycheck and they're not as successful as you and they're just, you know, an account executive. And if they're afraid of writing the wrong thing on LinkedIn or Twitter because it might, might not be aligned with the corporate policy or mission statement or North Star, you know, like, some people don't have the luxury of of being authentic because they they need that money but they they're also they need to be themselves so there's a couple things one i think that most of the time i have conversations with people that express that sentiment it's a cop out the things that they want to say are not going to get them fired i mean we live in a world where there is, yeah, there's, there's plenty of controversial things that you could say on social media that might get you fired, but those are actually fewer and farther between the vast majority of the things that people are actually considering about saying in public are not going to get them in trouble, are not going to get them fired. It's going to help prospects understand their character and 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 see them as real people it's going to further their career not endanger it like yeah don't curse out potential prospects don't take really provocative stances on social media but man everything else is fair game and i think it's it's to me most of the time when i hear people say that kind of thing it's imposter syndrome. It's they're really, really nervous about being themselves and it not going well. It's not about, it's not about getting fired. Um, 90% I would say of like the, the, the reasons people give about not being more active on social media, they are just forms of imposter syndrome. I hear a lot also, oh, well, I don't have anything unique to say. Damn right you do. There is no one out there that has your particular blend of experience and perspective and, you know, um, thinking on things, who's been through the same things that you have, who has the same skills and passions. You have a unique voice. It's just finding that pathway to saying it. And um, I think it's, it's more a matter of taking a step back and thinking about, okay, what are my, what, what would be my goals? And I think a ton, like one of the number one things I sort of urge the clients I work with on when we're working on kind of their thought leadership is I love the Maya Angelou quote. People don't remember what you said. They don't remember what you did. They remember how you made them feel. So take a moment and think about like, how do you want to make people feel? Unless you're kind of a shitty human, how you want to make people feel is not going to piss off your 
your employer. And if you can think through like, how do I want to make people feel? How do I want to, what do I want to be known for? Like, what is the takeaway I want people to have when I speak publicly? Usually the answers to those things are hopeful and powerful and inspiring. And when you have that kind of approach, it becomes just a little bit easier to start to put yourself out there. And, you know, one thing I can just say is that, yeah, I'm now at a point where I speak very candidly. I share very personal things about my life in a, on a public forum. It took time for me to get here. And what it did is it took me kind of pushing my personal envelope and seeing how it felt. And truly, every single time I have shared something hard and scary and personal, every single time, I will get direct messages from people who will say, oh my God, I'm going through something so similar and I feel so alone. Thank you for saying that. Or I went through that and I didn't know how to talk about it. And you make it make me feel like maybe I could talk about it and like be willing to just push yourself just a tiny bit. And I promise the response is, is going to be one of support and it will get easier and easier and easier to do it. But you have to be willing to kind of push yourself. Uh, well, I'll say goodbye. I really appreciate you uh, giving me the time being on the yeah. show. Thank you so much.